how many of you believe that an innovative culture is the backbone of a successful organization? Could it be the secret sauce, not just to surviving, but thriving in today's fast paced world? Well, rise and shine leaders, this is Glenn Guyton, keynote speaker and workplace trainer. It is time for our executive coffee break. I got my beverage in hand. I hope you have yours too. They say you can't choose your family, but you can choose your workplace culture and your beverage. Leadership matters, so you might as well get good at it. And one more thing, life is too short for bad coffee or bad tea or bad kombucha. Spend a little extra money. Uh, Enjoy your coffee. Enjoy your beverage of choice. Spend some good money on it, a decent amount of money, and make your life better, make your day happier. Today, I want to talk a little bit about innovation. Now, we hear a lot about innovation, and a lot of a lot of speakers like me talk about innovation, that we want to help you create a culture of innovation in the workplace. Is it even a real thing? Can you really do that? Some of my techie friends in the tech industry, you might want to check this out, listen to this, because uh, I, I think there's a certain mindset in the tech field, uh, and innovation is a is a big thing, right? In, in tech, we want to be innovators. We want to create. But how many of us are really innovators, and are we really creating a culture of in- innovation? That's what we want to do. So let's define that. That's the first thing I want to do, defining innovation in the workplace. Now, innovation isn't just about the next big product. It's about cultivating an environment where new ideas breathe life into your organization on a regular basis. It's about asking why and what if without fear of reprisal. To me, that is really at the heart of innovation is the culture of the organization. Can new ideas flow? Can creativity happen in the workplace? And I think that it's important that leaders foster a culture of innovation. And maybe you call it something else, but as leaders, it's our role to set the stage for innovation, for creativity. It's about leading by example, encouraging risk taking without the bounds of strategy. I mean, within the bounds of strategy and sustainability. We we have to have a strategy. We don't want, want people just coming up with just crazy ideas, but but maybe we do. Um but we we have limitations to what we do. We have parameters. Uh, but how do we take this abstract con- concept of innovation and create a tangible, make it a tangible part of our daily operations? I think that's the challenge for all of us. How do we monetize this? How do we operationalize this? We want to, we want, to, we want to create a culture where people are creative. And I'll give you an example. This is a good example. I just thought about this. Uh, I had someone that worked for me that was really creative. But they were creative in the wrong ways because what they wanted to do was outside the scope of our organization. It was beyond the level of service that we were able to afford. And so that's the that's the constraint. So that's the the boundaries that you have to put in place. Part of what you have to do as a leader is to create that. um, You want to create the environment, but you also want to create the parameters. So you want to have a clear vision, clear goals. Uh, clear out, outline the boundaries clearly so people understand, hey, yeah, we want you to be innovative, but we want you to be innovative within this spectrum of innovation activity. That's a new word I just made up. So yeah, innovation is, is great and we want people to be be creative. And we have to create this culture where people can bring up new ideas and sometimes even weird ideas. And we want people to push the, the boundaries. We want them to push past our uh, limits. Uh, at least I do. I, I think that's really helpful in the workplace, especially if you are in a tech field, if you are in a field where creativity is important. Uh, we want to make sure that we are creating the right environment, uh, uh, that we have the right medium. You know, if you were trying to grow, I, m- I made some bread the other day. Uh, so I made some fresh 
bread and I had to make sure my yeast was alive. Uh, so I put some sugar in some water. The water couldn't be too hot. The water couldn't be too cold, but the water had to be just right. And I had to have the sugar in there to start, get the yeast acting and bubbling and the yeast started bubbling and they started doing their thing. And that's what we want to do in the, in the, in the workplace. We want to get everything bubbling and excited. And we want to create the environment where good stuff can happen. Now I have a have a, a friend. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'll con- consider a friend. I, I mean, I've met her a couple of times, and so uh, we're not like best buds or anything. But I, I really appreciate her her work. Uh, Dr. Nadia Yetsin Vaeva, uh, and Dr. Nadia, excuse me if I didn't say your name um, properly. I, I'm going to work on it. But Dr. Nadia has a great book, How to Thrive in and chaos is a great book. I think it's on Amazon, so y'all can check that out. Order it. But she talks a little bit about innovation versus re reinvention. Uh, Dr. Nadia says that only about two percent of people are really innovators; like they can just create something new from scratch. And that, I would probably agree with that. Uh, but we want people to reimagine or reinvent things in the workplace. We want people to have creativity to to be able to take ideas and run with it. Uh, So it's important that we create a culture of of innovation, even if I would say even if everyone is not an innovator, we want to get that 2%, that 2.5% of those people, we want to get them working and productive too. But if we create this environment, this culture of innovation, uh, I do think that this infectious in the workplace and of people who have ideas that they will start to catch the vision. That's how I would say it, that they would catch the vision, uh, that they would take the ideas that they have, they would run with them and, and, and create something great. My leader, leadership philosophy when I've led teams and the things that I try to share with my clients is I want people really to feel free to surprise me. I think that's really a, one of the key things to innovation is allowing your team to surprise you uh you set the vision and you let them do the work that's it's really crucial and so just imagine a workplace where every challenge is viewed as an opportunity for growth and every failure as a stepping stone to success that's innovation in my book in dr nadia's book she would call that uh reinvention and so check check out the book really good stuff uh, good information. But here are a couple other practical steps to sh- share with you before I close is to create this culture of innovation. So just three quick things. Number one, empower your team. Empower your team. Encourage your team to propose solutions no matter how out of the box they may seem. Create a safe to fail environment where innovation, creativity is celebrated. All right. So leaders, stop trying to do everything yourself. Uh, Stop being the smartest one in the room. Um, You don't have to be the smartest one in the room. If you're so smart and you can do everything, why do you have a team? You you can't. So trust your team. Number two, continuous learning is so important. Invest in learning opportunities for your team. Workshops, seminars or even in-house innovation days can spark creativity. And I like to get people outside of the organization. You can do a lot of things internally. But sometimes it just helps to go out in nature, go uh, send your people on a trip somewhere so they can can see what their ideals look like in the wild. We know what their ideals look like in the workplace, but see what their ideas look like in the wild. That really drives innovation. And at least, at least for me, it sparks creativity. When I get to see how my ideas, the things, the things that I've been working on, how they relate into other areas. And so, again, if you're in the tech field and people are just locked into their computer screens, locked into whatever program or product they're working on, send them somewhere else. Send them them to another industry so that they can see the process through a different lens. So continuous learning is very, 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 very important. Get people out of the office. Get them out of of the office. Get them out. And maybe they're working from home. Get them out of their homes. Bring them back into the office. That's what we have to do nowadays. Get them them back into the office. No, get get them into different environments so they can see how their ideas and their creativity is flowing across different sectors, different mediums, or uh, in, in different industries. So help them get a different perspective. Uh, number three, 
open communication, this is like everything. Communication is just key to everything. And so, but but we take it for granted, but we really have to do a, a better job at communicating in the workplace. Foster an atmosphere where feedback is not just welcomed, but sought after. The the openness propels innovation by valuing every voice. And sometimes this is hard for us as leaders. We're busy. Uh, we can get short. At least I can get short with people. I know I get short, short with people. I get short when I'm busy or I'm, I'm focused on something uh, else. But there are often times when I have to come back to my team and say, hey, I was a little short with you. What did you need? This is what I was doing. I apologize. I was focused on someone, something else. How can I help you now? And, and people, I think people appreciate that. Now, you, you can't be a jerk all the time and just keep apologizing for being a jerk. But there are times when we are in jerk mode. Uh, we're in stress mode. Just be honest about that. Be transparent about it and then follow up with people. Don't just leave it in that toxic state that you left it. Go fix it. All right. Go back. Keep those lines of communication open. And sometimes as leaders, you have to pay attention to people. We don't want to take, pay attention to people. Sometimes I, I don't want to talk to my team, but I have to because that's my role. That's my job as a leader to keep that communication open and not be a roadblock to innovation and creativity. So challenge for the week. I give, you, I give you all so many challenges. I don't know how many of these you all do. Just do one or two things. I don't expect you to do uh, everything I recommend, but just try one or two things or maybe one thing uh, out of the videos that I do every every day. But Identify one process within your team or organization that feels stuck. Hold a brainstorming session focusing on innovative, innov innovative ways to revamp the process. Remember, the goal is not immediate perfection, uh, but to initiate a culture shift towards continuous improvement and innovation. Never let a good crisis uh, go by. Crisis is are always opportunities. So so never waste a good crisis. That's what I say in leadership. Never 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 waste disruption. Utilize it to your advantage to to bring about positive change in the organization. Well, I hope that's helpful. Thank you all for joining me today. So let's not forget the strength and perseverance that it takes to lead with empathy and inclusivity. Better leaders get better results. So to every one of you leading the charge for a more supportive and engaging workplace, I leave you with this. Stay bold, stay inspired, and remember that your actions today shape the culture of tomorrow. My name is Glenn Guyton. You all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Hey, incredible viewers, are you ready to transform your workplace into a haven of respect and productivity? Well, I would encourage you to check out my book, Navigating Microaggressions at Work. Uh, this is an essential read for your employee resource groups to help you identify, address, and prevent microaggressions in the workplace. Because I want you to foster an environment of inclusion and respect where everyone thrives. Make a choice that leads to a less stressed, high-performing team. The book is available on Amazon.